Today I'm going to take a SVG file that I have downloaded for my Cricut and convert it into an embroidery file. So basically I'm just going to go to my Cricut folder and find the file that I want which is in Boho Dreamer updated and quite often these files will come with a PNG which you could use um, as a uh, photo file. You don't really have to use that F SVG file. But if you were going to use the F SVG file because that's the only one you have, then you would open it and go and usually it's going to open in uh, whatever browser your default is. And then you would press the Control Alt and the print screen. It's going to show up as PRT SC. So those three together, and that does a screenshot. So then you're going to just go into your Create module, and you're going to say Load a Picture. And you have a picture because you just took a screenshot, so you're going to paste it in. So there's the paste. Next. Here's where you crop anything you want to crop. So you just slide the corners. And next, and you're going to pick your hoop. And in this case, I'm going to use the 260 by 200. And we're going to do the rotated position. And right now, it says there are 10 colors. Um, we can just leave that as is. And there is your file in the Create module. From there, I'm going to get the paintbrush, and I'm going to get rid of some stuff. So I'm going to grab the paintbrush, and I'm just going to paint white over everything that I want, don't want. Okay, and we're almost done. Okay, so there is the graphic file. Then we're going to go to Quick Create. Okay, see, we still got a line up here. So I'm going to go back to Paint and see if I can get rid of that. It's really not that much of a bother to have that line there because we're going to fill whatever we want to fill and we just leave that blank. So there's that line. Just a little bit more here and it should be gone. Okay so then we are going to do the fill area and line options. And we're going to decide how we're going to fill the um, letters. So there we go. We can fill them with any one of those fills. We can also um, fill them with other things. If we were to say we wanted to fill it with a motif, then your options are going to be different. So then you pick what motif you want. And if you want two motifs, make sure you click the second one and click the box in Use Motif 2, and then you would end up with two motifs filling it. So I am going to fill it with a pattern fill. And I've set that to pattern fill number three. Everything looks good there. Um, satin line. I am going to use a. I'm going to use a triple stitch. And here I can also toggle the length of that triple stitch to make it longer or shorter. I'm going to going to use it as is. And then we're just going to do 
quick stitch. Now quick stitch here, see how it goes around the outside of the letter? We don't want that, so we're going to do quick stitch with auto hole, and that will allow us to do the whole thing. And this will stitch out in the order that we select our letters and things too. And if you would like to add a color to some of the other areas, you would go to color change and pick your color. Make sure that when you pick your color that you're on the last block. The other thing I'd like to mention here is if you decide that you want to stitch something first versus last, you can left click and slide them up, or you can right click and choose layout order. Um, sometimes you want a background to stitch first and then the interior to stitch last, but it was easier to do the interior design um, first because it was small. And then you do the background, and then you can slide it up so that little tiny um, interior is on top. I don't know how best to explain that, but that's the way it's done. So you can just take and slide it up. And remember, when you do that, the layout order is to move backwards is going to stitch first. To move to the front is going to stitch last. So, and the other thing is it, when you're filling these, you can select the number two in the film strip, right click, and you get these dots. The corners, if you hold down the control button, and you can alter those. If you don't hold that control button, look what happens. It is a like a curve. So as soon as I click on that button and hold the control, you get the good angle again. But those can be adjusted, and another right click will allow you to uh, choose another pattern if you would like. The other thing I want to mention here is if you see something that looks like a stitched line that goes across, um, it's not showing up now, but you can toggle this so that your stitches are at a different angle. To suit you. Okay, so that's basically how you're going to take an SVG. Um, remember to use that zoom tool to get in closer, and zoom to fit will send it back the way you want it to be. Um, we just put a pink in there, so I'm going to go quick stitch with auto hole. I'm going to see what it does. And here is probably an example of these little tiny pieces that should be stitched on top. So if I did those little tiny pieces first, I would want them moved. And I would just slide them up to the top and they would stitch first. Okay. So that's basically how you're going to take an SVG file and turn it into an embroidery. Right now, we are doing an EDO file. I always save my EDO files. So file, save as. You see the EDO file. I name it. 
I'm just going to name it SVG for now. And I'm going to put it out on my desktop because I'm probably not going to want to keep it. And it's easy for me to just delete it there. That's going to allow me to come back in later and change things around. If I stitch it out and something doesn't look right, I can change it. If I go to view, I can look at the 2D, object view, 3D view, okay, and then we would go to export embroidery. Again, I'm going to put it out on my desktop because I'm not going to keep this. If I open up the Premiere program, the straight embroidery, I'm going to say insert. And remember, insert allows you to, to move things around in layers. So you should choose insert when possible. There's the desktop. There's the SVG file. I can turn it. And notice it only took what I digitized. It left the arrow below. And that's also something to remember. You can take parts and pieces and save them as embroidery files and then just apply them to other designs. Um, this has a single stitch around the outside. You can see that. And this has a sing uh, the it's not a single stitch, sorry, it's a triple stitch on around the outside. Um, and that's basically how you would turn an SVG into an embroidery file. Okay, hope this helps you. Thanks, bye.